The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman. Thank you, Mr. Sauer. And uh, let me show you something quite interesting here because the manner in which the Dow broke out on Thursday had a long legged doji on Friday, making a new all time high today above that high of Friday of 28,290. It's the high today so far is 28,337. And if you look at, oh, let me just do this right now. And if you look at the automated Chapman wave resistance levels, we've just punched right through. Look, uh, this is the E mini uh, 3190 uh, to 3192 resistance. It's gone to 3198. The Dow, INDU. The Dow has resistance right here, uh, 28,271 uh, to 28,240, and then up at 28,479 in the daily. A whole bunch at 28,361 to 28, all the way to 28,591 automated uh, resistance levels. I'm suspecting that when we get to a leg C and then a D, it's kind of the top that we'd be looking at at this particular point, but wow, 200 points. Uh, it, when Boeing itself is down, what is Boeing? It's come back a little bit. Uh, Boeing was down 14, now it's down 11. Uh, at 3.30, uh, yeah, they just have terrible problems. Um, S&P, S&P cash itself, this is not the E-minis. The cash has got 3183 uh, and then 3206. And we're trading right now at 3196. 3197 3, has been the resistance. And if you look at the weekly, we're powering right through that. It is really powerful when a price goes through a bunch, a cluster of resistance levels or goes below. Look what happened. Yeah, look on the left side. Look at these um, cluster formations in back in 2016 in the monthly chart of the 2127 to 2249 level. Just a ton of them. And look how well it was resistance until it snapped through it. So uh, I got to respect that. And I've got to say, this is showing a lot of strength. Now, one of the things I was looking at and mentioned to uh, subscribers over the weekend to my opening call is that the daily chart, the, the nine period exponential moving average was just about to cross negative on Thursday at the close. And then Friday it gaps up. And now look what's back. It, it never even got to the, even with that horrible action, going from 28,146 to 27,325. Not, nothing. And now it's a th over a thousand points higher than that. Uh, so you've got to consider that this is internal strength, and therefore I have D slash B here, but I see there's a real good chance that we're looking at a B, a new leg B at this particular point, and that's only three up in the Chapman Wave uh, methodology, Chapman Wave 5 methodology. And here you can see the automated resistance levels of 28,479 next. And as I say, this is still only leg B. And... Um, MACD just crossed positive today, first time since it turned down, since that really ugly turnaround uh, back on the 27th. And uh, now we're looking at uh, the stochastic improving to the 82% level. That's really good. This is what I show my subscribers every day. Let me show you, give you a little taste of what we're doing, especially since you've got the um, special bonus here at TFNN for subscribers, um, for, you, for you to be able to... Uh, either continue subscriptions or you to get new subscriptions with all the um, different, here we go, with all the different uh, products that we have here at TFNN. So I'm just going to get this down there. So this is what I was showing for the, um, for the 120 minute chart saying that there's a good chance that if it takes out, look, there's 120, I do this every day, explain what we get, what's going on here and uh, where the Dow needs to be holding. 
um, after 1.30 this afternoon to be able to say that it's going to continue higher. I was expecting later in the day to see some selling. I don't know if that will occur, but that's what I was anticipating based on the chart formation here. And this is a 120-minute chart. And here's the 100. And let me just move this away here so you can see this. And right that's 120 minute chart. Where's my daily chart? Do I have my daily chart? Disappeared. Um, scrolling across. Oh, you know what? I ran out of space there, so it's got a little squashed. Um, there it is. So here's the daily chart. There's this long legged doji. And I said that there's a real good chance if we can take out this high in the next day or so, this will be a B and we'll start leg C. And you can see the MACD hasn't got MACD close to crossing positive, hadn't yet, and it has now. So that's the kind of thing that I do. Plus, I show this different charts of all this, what we, we're having, what we have in our positions, our, our cyber, cyber arc, which we've got in the 104 level, taking a few little tranches off, um, actually hit 126. On Friday, it's doing very nicely. Uh, I was wrong about the SMHs. They've just broken out. They just soared over the last couple of days. Um, something that's going to be very interesting is that we, um, I, I have to apologize to subscribers. There was a position that we did get Friday pre market. I, I was just so busy, I had a little trouble with, my, uh, with, the, with the internet. Uh, actually, with the program itself, so I, I missed uh, I missed out updating that, and then I forgot over the weekend to to revise that. So we did get a position in a very low price stock, and it's doing nicely. And, and if you didn't get it, we still have now a chance to to get in if it pulls back because it's acting very well. And that Bank of America, I can't believe this Bank of America. Uh, when everyone was talking about the banks as being just non nothing, they I kept hearing people say, "Oh yeah, they're okay." But with interest rates and all that, just forget about the banks. Look at this Bank of America. We're in a year ago in the 24th. It's trading right now today. It's 3509. Uh, we've taken some. We've got a small position left. We've had it as a trading vehicle periodically. Um, hey, this is really nice action for for a financial Bank of America. I mean, this is this is really good, and um, some positions we're still trying to get. I do like the commodities. Let me show you this. Uh, oh wait, this is, uh, I, I did Larry's show earlier on, so I went through all the different charts. So for a moment there, I can, kind of forgot that I need to review those. So let me just do this real quickly. INDU, the Dow. Bumping up against trend line resistance right here, acting extremely well. I believe this is new leg B and the Chapman Wave methodology. Let me just give you this. We're always looking for at least a D in a buy signal to buy mode, which I believe we're in a buy mode now. So that should go to four higher peaks. You can go even E, F, and G. But D, the fourth highest peak, is our objective. And then we do an analysis to see if we can recycle and et cetera. But we're only looking for straight up, straight down, straight line moves arches and cups and a mixture of the two. So um, the lowercase h or the reverse y is what we look at. Let's go to Scott in Safety Harbor. Scott, how are you? Oh, Basil, what, what, what a uh, three or four weeks here, Basil. We had a huge day on X three weeks ago. It dropped back to uh, the 1250. I, I grabbed it and then uh, it went right back up to 1360. And I jumped down one, and yeah. it was uh, fantastic. And uh, so, so, I mean, I'm Scott, over 100 grand on that on, one Scott, stock. Scott, but it's Scott, now got me Scott, perplexed Scott, Scott. for the first Scott. time. I think it's recalibrating. Yeah, but just Scott, we're about to go to a break. I don't want to cut you off. I just want to say, hold on. We'll go on and straight off to the break. We're talking about U.S. Steel X is trading down 34 cents at 30.38. If you're not currently using the TAS profile scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. 
Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Basil Jackman, Tiger Traditions out, Dallas up 181, S&P's up 28. We are on with Scott in, uh, let's see, well, I was, I was for Safety Harbor, of course. Uh, down 13.37, down 34 cents, U.S. Steel. So, Scott, what are you doing? I'm trying to, uh, to figure out U.S. Steel at this point. I mean, it's been an ATM. I, I've made over 100000 on it in six weeks. It's just been fantastic for me, but I just feel, and you know how I can really, you know, kind of get, get tight with these certain stocks. Uh, I, I feel like it might recalibrate now for some reason into the 12s and have a different trading range. It's been from 13 uh, 70s to the 1430. I've done seven trades on that, but it's just, it's just something's different. So what do you see? So I, I tell you what is a little different, and I was looking at this uh, for about the past week or so. I've been looking at it and saying to myself, I'm looking at other areas in the economy that have been doing very well, and these are infrastructure stocks. And I thought that there was a chance that we would get information on U.S. steel because some of the other steel stocks, let me just put this in here, SLX is the actual symbol for the ETF of the steel sector, um, have done very nicely. So the way I looked at U.S. steel, there is something going on in the shorter term, and it might be more than short term, I don't know yet, but if you look at this, you look at SLX, AKS got a, a takeover off and it's done absolutely fabulously. Um, NUE, I think that's new core, NUE's new core, new core uh, trading very nicely. So US Steel is the one that's kind of, I can't call it a laggard, going from 10 
to 14, a 40% gain is not a laggard, but in the monthly chart, it is just not showing the strength that I anticipated at this particular time. So I've, I'm kind of saying to you, I think you're right, and I would just treat it the way you've done. I'm, look, you're the one that's done really well with US Steel, so I'm not going to tell you how to trade it. What I am going to say is that the 50-period moving average is at about 13, and then you get really important, all the way to 1250, you get very important support levels. My, my eye suggests that at this particular point, and especially with it being down 2.65% today, you are still, something is different. And therefore, and that weekly chart, there's nothing really wrong with the weekly chart, but it is just dipping a little too, if it goes under 13, 30, 13 uh, 15, I think it's got a problem. So I'm going to suggest you know, I've that been you- kind of hypnotized by it. And I think my wife, sometimes out of the mouths of novices or babes, you know, comes comes wisdom. The other day she said, I said something about you. She said, well, didn't, didn't, wasn't that $10 a short time ago? And then it kind of snapped me out of it thinking, wait a minute. 40%. This is almost 50% in a, in a, in a 50, couple yeah. of months. So, you know, so what I if, for instance, Apple, you know, $200 and, and, and now it's 300 350 so, I mean, sometimes on the lower stocks, we don't realize the percentage when it correct. moves, but that's exactly. a huge percentage. And I think it spooked a little, a few of the buyers. That, it's that just is gone up too fast. That's a very good point. So, Scott, what I'm going to say to you is, Use your instinct. Give it a little bit of a breather here. But I would just say to you, based on the 120-minute chart, let me just get back to that because I was looking at it over the weekend. Yes, if this starts to stabilize at about 13.25, 13.18, and you see strength, you could do one more quick upside bounce, but I would just treat it as a bounce at this time. It looks to me like it needs a little bit. I've drawn in the rectangle. If you look at my chart, you'll see between 13, 78, and I would put it at about 13. Let me give you an exact figure. At about 13, at 1281, there's a big congestion area. It keeps coming back. Why don't you wait as you've done before? Let it get to the lower range, and then you can treat it as ready for bounces, because if it takes out that whole 1280 to 1250 area over the next week and a quarter, I think it's got a problem. Something else is going on. Hey, but congratulations. You've done this very well. Thanks so much for calling, and let me know how it goes. I appreciate it, Basil. You know, even even with plants, I mean, if a fruit tree grows too quickly or, or a tree they use for wood grows too quickly, what happens? The product it produces is, is not as good. So, it's inferior, yeah, I think it's, correct. It's a little more fertilizer and a little more time, but I, I do think it's stable, but I agree with everything that you said. Have a great holiday. Thank you. You too, Scott. Thank you for calling. So, folks, I just want to hear a couple of things that I had promised that I would go through. Let me just see if I can get this right now. Let me just go to my e-mini chart. <clears throat> it's um, in this rectangle formation in the 10-minute chart. That's not, not what I want you to. I want you to get to, I hope I can find it. Is this the 120-minute chart, please? Nope, it's not. This is my two. I did. I had a question over the weekend. Would I be able to go through and send over um, my my e-mini 120-minute chart? And I did it, and I have to just try to find. Let me just check it out. Give me one second. Window, um, more windows. Look for the one that says 120 minute, 120, 120, 300. Nope, 30, 60. Going once, going twice. 100. Oh, 240. That's what I wanted. There it is. There it comes. Here we go. So let me just check this out, and I need to see where I wrote this down. Oh, gosh, where did I put it? Um, it doesn't matter. So the question is, could I, could I show it? So this is a little unusual in that we've got a gap to the—we've got a move to the upside, which could essentially be starting something else. So what I said is I would show the chart just in a picture form. I will send it on. But this goes back to the uh, the low that was made on the um, 9th of October at 2881.75. Now, you remember, I always look for peak Ds, but you can go higher. But Ds, the, 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 when you get a buy signal, Ds is what you are trying to accomplish. So we've got one buy mode that went to a D, but then it went up to an E, pulls back. Then another one that went to a D, then pulled back, went to E. And then an unusual Chapman Wave right arm extension 
and it went to an F, then pulled back, then a very quick A, B, C, D, and then there was a much more complicated one that went to a D, pulls back, goes to an F, so it just keeps going. So I had one, two, three, four, five, six, and then this huge G that was made right here on the 27th, and then the, uh, on, the, on the second, you got the gap up to the all-time highs in the futures. At that point, you didn't get it in the cash indexes. So the E-mini future goes to uh, 3,158 round number high. And then it really careens, plummets down to the 3,069.50 level uh, on the third. And then starts another buy mode that goes to peak E, pulls back. Oops, I forgot to put that uh, up arrow in. Uh, right there. Now it's going to an E. Now the question is, have we just started a new buy mode or is this an unusual leg in the 120 minute chart, an F, and then you've got to get some kind of a pullback before you start another one? We won't know, but everything here is so very, very positive right at this time. So I will send this chart on and then I'm going to send the chart that goes back right here. Let me see if I can go back further right here. Mm, there it is. Right, to the low that was made on the 25th of August, around about 28, uh, 20th, somewhere around there, and all the different peaks and troughs, and the very sharp move to the October 4th low, October 3rd low, and then we started another rally. So I'll be sending, the, uh, maybe it'll be two or three different charts that I'll be sending on. I just thought I said I would also show it in, the, in my show. And here it is. Now the big question is, where are we here? And I'll, I'll, I'll get to that as we come go through the show. Basil Chapman, Dow's up 178, S&P's up 28. I'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now is a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charted software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. 
This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, so, uh, sorry, Jason, that was the cash you wanted to do. I'll do the cash and send it on to you. I did the uh, e-mini, the, uh, uh, which is a pity that I did that because it's going to be wrapping up in another couple of days. We're going to go to the next contract, which will be March. doesn't matter. I needed to do it on the S&P. I would have had it on the Dow. But uh, that's the question. I like to, uh, for subscribers, I like to try my best to be able to fulfill the uh, the question that they asked. Um, so this is leg B in FLDM up uh, 0.01 at 317. Didn't even notice the price. I just looked at the pattern. This is Fluidime Corporation. I had seen this one some time ago because I thought it was Fluid Dynamics, uh, but it isn't Fluid Dynamics. It's something else. Um, I'm looking at it here. It's made a peak C in the... Uh, Weekly chart from the July 2017 low all the way to uh, early early 2020, and then it failed and it's come all the way back now. So this is the one. So let me just talk about this for a moment. Now, we're talking about a $3.17 stock. Let's just for a moment imagine that it was $31.70. That would be a, more appropriate to what I'm going to talk about, but the pattern doesn't change. You see this gap, everything was going nicely, and then on the 5th of November, it closes at 5.11 after hitting 5.20. Next day, it opens. This is, it opens at 3.50. So it goes from, uh, oops, right here, it goes from a close of 5.20, and it opens at 3.50. Ah, that's not the story. The story is it then gets cut by a third from that level and goes down to $2.34 on the 6th of November, the same day. And then it goes sideways with slightly lower lows, and then it makes another low, a decisive low, on the 20th of no November at $2.12. So I just want to talk about this, not as a stock. The question in the den was, is this... Where did it go? Uh, FLDM, Fluidime, Basil, do you think this fills the gap or returns to the bottom of the range? So this is the way I'm looking at it. When you see a gap, what I love to do, and in the trade station software, it's just so nice you just grab that. Some uh, other software packages have very really nice drawing tools. This is Their thing has been drawing and programming, so that's what they do very well. So the high that was made on that day that it, it, it went, uh, 350 was the uh, high of the day on the 6th. That's the rectangle high of the price, but low of the rectangle because that's the gap. And the gap low of the 5th of November um, at 503. So let's just say between 5 and 550, I'm sorry, 5 and 350, that's your gap. That's a huge gap. I just wanted to mention that whenever I see this kind of price move and over a period of weeks, this is a very, this is a rectangle formation and it has a rally towards the gap low, sorry, the gap high, that would be 350, and then maybe pulls back, but it goes into that gap and then starts to trade there. And the next thing you know, you forget about it, you're looking at it. But like three weeks later, you look and you say, oh, my goodness, not only did it fill the gap, but it's gone to a new recovery high, but, but below, not, not below, the, um, below the bottom part of the rectangle, but maybe just a little bit below the upper part or even higher above it. In this case, it would be the high of the fourth of 523. That's spectacular action. So I can't answer that question now because we haven't even gone into the gap of 350. The high today is 326. It's trading at 316. But I like the MACD. I like the stochastic at 92%. The monthly chart is the weekly chart. Sorry, has just seen the MACD. This is the first part of the week, so we can't even talk about it as if it's Friday. It's just the beginning of the week. Start to cross positives. Stochastics is rallying. It's not flat. It's rallying at 16%. I like this. But I would just say to you, and this person likes the longer-term positions, if you wanted to start a position here at 316, I would just like nibble, let's say, at $3.16. I wouldn't buy more than 100 uh, at this particular point because I need to see uh, three things. One is that if it pulls back, it doesn't close under the 14-period moving average of 284 because if it does that, then the weekly chart says, nah, 
just sideways, trying its best to form a base. Long, uh, nothing to see longer term until you really get a breakout, number one. Number two is if it pulls back here and then makes a leg C, and that leg C takes you to the 532 level, 352 level, so I got the mix, numbers mixed up. That's really nice action, and you're in it, because what I would do then is if it pulls back here and then goes one penny above the 326 high of today, if that's still the high of the day, and you make a peak B because it's a little low, just a little low tomorrow, that's where I add another position, a little bit bigger, but not overly, just a little bit bigger, and that's the position trying to make the 316 or 315 entry right now, not necessarily a call, but a call with a stop that's a little bit wider, but the new position can't have a very wide stop. And I hope it doesn't complicate it. And the reason is that if over a period of time this suddenly starts to get to four and it hasn't broke under 230 or 220, hasn't just broken down, it's actually moving higher. When, when people finally realize that they were all getting out, look at the volume on the day of the... Now, this is a question that should have been asked and it wasn't asked. Is the volume... Is this a Chapman Wave volume reversal climax session of the 6th of November that says you can go 28 bars without... Um, uh, 28 bars without testing the low? No, it's not because you've already broken to a lower low. You went lower, you should have had way more volume on that low. So that doesn't fit this category. That would have been the question. Nobody asked it. I, I asked it because I have all these questions on the chef wave methodology. So that's a question. So that's so the two things. Now the third thing is you start a little bit here at 316. The next thing you know, the darn thing's at 334. And you say, wow, I should have had more than 100 shares. No, I mean, no this, is a, this, is a, this is a stock that's been clobbered and it hasn't shown yet the kind of strength it has. Technical daily strength, but that weekly chart is still very poor. So you need to be patient. At some point, I suspect if this is going to go much higher and there is a test of the three area and it doesn't break under that in the next, the whole week, it just doesn't break three, but it's making slightly higher highs and higher lows, then I'd say, great. So just a nibble, get, and just give me a yell, you know, text me or in the den, just say what's happening. If I see that, I'll, I'll answer you. But right now, it's a good eye. You've got the right idea. But this is, as I say, this is, I think this should be some kind of infrastructure, fluid dime. It's in the fluid, I mean, who knows. Um, but other stocks that are in the area um, have done very nicely. And actually, have done surprisingly well. And it says to me, that's the reason why I was saying to Scott that I don't know quite what's going on with U.S. Steel because that is part of the infrastructure. Okay. Next thing we want to do is question. Oh, uh, um, did I just answer that for for sure with the 120 minute chart? Sure, no, it's uh, on the S&P cash. I did it on the S&P futures. I'll do it on the cash. It'll take me a little while. I might get to it in the next day or two. I know there's no rush, but I will get to it. Um, it's a good question, and, and, and the way you pose the question, I like that. So I will do it. Next question I had for myself is, um, so EUR USD looked like it was having a great day on Friday, but it closed terribly by the end of the day. Today it's an inside bar. And this is saying to me, we aren't quite done. That I, I think that the... I don't know if there's a concerted effort by the Fed to have the dollar come down. I suspect that this is just selling. It's kind of European selling or international selling. I got a feeling the dollar is holding well. I think the dollar in the end, by the, this time in three months, in three months' time, I'm, I should have said, I think the dollar could be back in the 98th. Rather if you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. 
That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. To correct myself, uh, after I was reminded, the dead, not reminded, but told me dead, that FLDM, fluid dime, uh, F L U I D I G M, is a. Um, is a buy in the biotech area. So uh, that, that makes sense there because of the action uh, supplies biotech companies, not infrastructure. Okay, so that's a little different because if it hadn't had that gap, I would say, hey, the way it's moved, this is, uh, I mean, this is definitely uh, one of my screamers. Look, it's gone from 250 to three to the high today of 326 in just a, a few sessions. A green candle, green, 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 green. Uh, but, uh, that gap is as an issue. There's a reason why there's a gap. So I don't want to mess with that. Okay, a couple of things that I want you to do is um, I wrote it down one thing at a time. Yeah, so Investor Business Daily, they had was the stocks that they thought were absolute five outstanding stocks. So Adobe gaps up, great, great earnings and gaps up, and it's at 322.89. Um, it's a stock that I keep a, a good eye on. I should actually have handled, uh, you know, had positions uh, on for subscribers in this because it is something that I've watched for a long time. My my son, the company that he worked for, was uh, uh, was taken over by Adobe um, just uh, like a couple of weeks after he had left it to go to another company, a private company. Um, and so I, I was following it. And now this is only leg B in the weekly chart, leg C in the monthly, Adobe Cloud Digital Commerce. I mean, I don't know what they're not in. Um, in fact, the CEO was on the other day. I heard him and wow, I mean, they have really, let me just show you this. Let me, let me just go back here, Adobe. So I'm gonna squeeze this chart. This is a monthly chart. I'm gonna squeeze it back in a little too much squeezing there. Um, back in 
1999, December, it comes public. Now, this is with splits and everything, so I can't really say. But this is the price that I've got here is it opens at 16.14, dips to 15.47, and has a high of 17.97. It then rallies all the way into November, a year later, November, it hits 43.66. This is when the general market had really tumbled. Now, I, 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 I don't want to take time now about no one spoke about the um, the crash that Clinton had handed over to Bush. This is, uh, you know, this is an incredible thing how, how the media narrates the story. And that's the story that gets uh, um, implemented and uh, re repeated over and over. So I don't remember anybody saying that because there was this kind of a sideways to down move. But that basically January to March was the highs, all time highs at that point. And we had the major crash in the NASDAQ, right? Um, so this stock goes down from 43.66 all time high in November of 2003. Um, so 2000 in March of 2000 and goes down to around about the nine ish area, eight dollars, eight twenty five, nine dollars area, somewhere around uh, September of 2002. And then it saw a whole series of moves and it climbs to October of 2007, 48, 47. So that's a double of what it was back at that height that was made in uh, November, I think it was, did I say, in uh, 2000. And then turns down and goes all the way down to 23, 22, in fact. Misses round number by a penny. February of Mar February of 2009. February, not March, but February. Then in March, it goes to a low of 15.87, uh, 17 cents lo lower. And what happens is it starts this huge move. So look, look at the cup formation, this beautiful cup formation, and then it took a huge dive. The cup formation goes from 2000, uh, the high of 2000 to the low of 2002, all the way up to quite a whole bunch of tops, all the way from to 2006 and slightly higher 2007, double tops, and then comes back down very sharply and goes back to 20, the 1570 area. So. From that level, it makes another cup formation, more like a rectangle, but it has two kind of cup formations. And then it really starts the big move up. And that big move up takes it to the high of today, 325. So it was once upon a time at $8. I would say $8 to 325 is not a bad increase. And it's in, I've got this as a leg D. I shouldn't do that. This is really an, a D slash B, a D, D slash C. In fact, I'm going to be very strict. I'm going to call it a C right now because that peak F was the same peak that everybody else made around about the 27th. Um, and it pulled back. Ruth the MACD and stochastic everything. So this is a legitimate new buy mode. And I believe we're in leg C to the upside. And there should be at least a D to come. So Adobe, the question I had over the weekend was, what about Adobe? So what about Adobe? Adobe at this particular point is acting extremely well. There's a little, <laughs> that'd be quite cute, going up the hill. But it's like a little lawnmower. Actually, it's a little moped type thing or scooter. Um, and 325.25 is a high today. And it's gapped up over the last two days from the earnings report. I love it when you get a gap and then you don't test the gap. You go straight to new new recovery high, in this case, all time high. And it's leg B in the weekly chart. And this monthly chart is in leg C. Adobe is looking fantastic. Now, what would you do? How do you do? Do you play this right now? Well, on a short term basis, you could buy it right here at 322 because I'm anticipating that there should be or there could be. A new leg D to the upside, at least. But the, the way the stochastic and MACD are acting, we'll have to see how that uh, unfolds in terms of support. But really, you have you have no choice. If you're looking at the intermediate term, yes, it could pull back. And yes, it could come back all the way to 290. So it's a 10% correction. But if you say, hey, it's a leg C in the monthly chart. If this really gets going, it could climb to the 340s or 350s. So 10% risk when you've got yourself um, maybe a 15 or 13% gain. To me, I, that's, that's kind of risky. 
because you're using up a lot of money at 322 to to put that to work with a risk of a 10 percent decline and then perhaps you can get 12 to 15 percent on the upside so i'm just going to say for the questioner on adobe i believe i've got this correct although there was an instant restart they could have been f slash um b and then this would be probably a c and this could be a d i don't know but at this point i do see it going higher but I don't see it going much higher. So this is where I would grab it. I don't do this all that often, but I do it enough now over the last, I've had this for about 11 years, but I do it now because I've had, it just, it, it has really been a great help in terms of looking at resistance. So 332 on the daily is Chapman Wave automated resistance. It's a 322, that's 10 points higher. 327 on the weekly underneath the daily high. Isn't that interesting the way these things sometimes work? is the resistance and a whole bunch of 321 and here we are at 325 in the monthly chart i don't have anything registering so this so far says that adobe is acting very well my thinking here is let's have some patience and let's see i can give this as a short-term trade but i need to see how does it pull back how does it go to three dollars and uh, three dollars 321 to 317 that's where i really look at it i'll be back down up on 64. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated traded folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. So you can see here in the five-minute chart of the E-mini, you see all this cluster of resistance levels of the 3198 in the December contract. He supported 3196.95, then 395s. 
uh, 3195 is in resistance. But I love to talk about the rectangle formation. These rectangle formations, look, we've basically been, since the big gap uh, back at 1030 to 3197.75, we've kind of been in the sideways tra trading range, a little bit under, a little bit over, but basically in this range for a long time. Remember, try to outline for yourself some kind of uh, a res it is a horizontal, uh, sorry, it is a horizontal set of two lines that make, like making a channel, a sideways channel. But more importantly, think of it as a rectangle. And that rectangle says, these are outlining the resistance and support levels. And the longer you stay there, the greater the difficulty is for this price to spiral away to the upside or the downside without giving at least one more test in the middle, and then it could take off. So this is a two-minute chart of the E-mini. Just wanted to show that. Couple of th I had a couple of questions just come in as we were wrapping up here. So just uh, the IYT, yes, the IYT is uh, not acting as well as it should um, overall, but I love the little break that we've got to the upside, $1.76 at $195.69. It's starting to break this down channel, Chapway falling axe formation. Remember, uh, if you break to the upside, you can go one to one to the upside, but you've got to go each level to the left, resistance first. So this is the start. That monthly chart really needs to see uh, 198 to 199 traded in, the, in December to get this candle to break to the upside away from this resistance level, downtrend line. A uh, question I had about the IYR, which is the REITs. Uh, what a plunge. Just a spectacular move to the upside and now taking quite a dive from the 96 area. We're trading at 89.77. Big arch. Remember the dreaded H pattern? There it is in red, especially all these red candles. Tells you exactly what it's doing. Um, this is something to keep in mind as a pattern to remember. Uh, and we're taking the left side low out. So check out my opening call, my daily news there. Some have really nice trades in that. And, uh, yep, a couple of losses, but we try to keep them to absolute minimal. But at the same time, check it out. Nice discount you get at Tiger, Tiger Dollars. And now you're going to go to Steve Rose. You're going to go to Dave White. And then Tom O'Brien's back again. Uh, so check out my opening call, daily news there. I'll be back tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for being here.